Hello and welcome to TVC News at 7. And we're staying with security concerns across the country where the military has declared at one of the leaders of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Simon Ekba, wanted. According to a statement by the Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, Mr. Ekba and other insurgents and criminals are wanted for undermining the security of the country. Mr. Ekba, who is number 78 on the list, has been accused of secessionist agitations under IPOB. Military authorities also declared 96 other persons wanted alongside Simon Ekwa as efforts continue to track down those responsible for the murder of the military personnel who were on a peace mission in Okwama community of Delta State. A banner wanted uh, suspected terrorists and their cohorts have been released and the military says the banners would be deployed in strategic areas across the country for ease of recognition and the arrest of wanted persons. Well, right now I have joining me to discuss this, a retired police chief, DSP Eze Harrison. Good to have you on the news at this time. So now the military has declared lots of people wanted, including the leader of the one of the leaders of proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Simon Ekwa. But talk to us about what you make of this. Why this uh, move? You know, is it too late or is it too soon with the numbers being put out there by the military? What do you make of this? Um, the, the claim is that sometimes the way we approach some issues the militaries who are said to be going on a peace mission. If it is a local and a penal security thing, it would have been the police that should have been sent on such peace mission. It is when it appears to be overwhelming the police uh, thing, that is when the military could join to mediate. All right? Now, in a kind of security team, before the military will be asked to go for such a peacekeeping, it means it has defied the operations of the police. But in this case, I don't know why the military should get involved in a squabble between two neighboring communities who are said to be hard. Land issues. All right? So to me, it is improper. It is not normal for the army to get involved too soon in such a community dispute over land. Now, from other pillars, we have an understanding that there are so many other factors that surround the activities of the military in that community. I don't think that the military are the force that should have been sent on a peace mission in that community because the agency that is saddled with the informal security of the country has not weighed into the matter. So on that note, it is very wrong for the military to go for such a mission in the first place because it is an internal security thing. If there are no other underlying factors, the military in the first place, the army, are not supposed to get involved at this early stage because the police who are saddled with that responsibility has not been invited into it. And if the army so think to get involved, there are methodologies, there are systems, there are tactical approach to some of these things. Okay, the two so communities have leaders. Have okay. the leaders been called to see what is actually the problem? But such was not done. And on the side of the uh, I called someone and all of that. Well, the young man is in Finland making noise. Uh, it should be up to Nigerian government to actually look into what is the problem in the southeastern Nigeria. And also, the presence of the federal government is not felt in the southeastern Nigeria. And these are some of the things that is leading to the agitations and so on and so forth. So that is what I could make of all this, because every other thing are sensitive security issues that we would not want to 
double into this hour. Right. With that being said, what other approach would you propose that this situation or this situ this situation rather should be handled? You know, we just understand that the military has declared 96 persons wanted in connection to terrorist activities in the country. Simon Ekpa has been included. But what would you make, or what are your thoughts generally on how it's been put out there, and what do you think should be the a strategic approach to address some of the concerns you also highlighted? Now, look at this. Now, Simon Ekpa, to me, is not a terrorist. He is an educator. Until we begin to put a difference between those who are agitating for something and those who are actually terrorists. Now, we know those that are terrorist group leaders in the country, and nothing positive has been done to quell the activities of those that are known to be terrorists, and so on and so forth. I don't see someone Edna as a terrorist. I see him as an agitator. I see Nandikala as an agitator, and several other uh, ethnic groups that are agitating for one thing or the other, which to me, the federal government should have sit back, have a roundtable talk, and discuss with these people to find out what are their grievances, why are they agitating, and what are they agitating for. These and more other ways could be adopted mm. so that we'll be able to live in harmony as one nation. So, mm. uh, including someone Edna in the list of those 96 or there about terrorists that have been listed by the government, I don't see, I don't see that as uh, I don't see him being a part of that terrorist group. He's an agitator. He is asking for something. The right. federal government should look into what is the reason why he is asking for what he is asking for. And when that is looked into, then it could be resolved. We could have a roundtable discussion, and all those issues will be resolved. Right, I don't think that's... there is anybody who wants to break away from Nigeria, but I think they're asking that there should be more presence of the federal government activities and agencies in the other neglected. All right. Well, that's where we have to leave it for now. Thank you so much, DS.